Now let us look at the small topic, customer profitability and product profitability. This is very similar to segment reporting, right? You remember what you did in segment reporting students, what did you do? You made income statement for every segment. You had profit and loss for every segment. You had the operating income relating to that particular segment. <clears throat> also that which is related to the particular manager, the, 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 the costs, the revenues, and the costs which are under the control of the particular manager, right? So just like all costs and revenues with respect to a segment was considered, similarly, when you consider all the costs and revenues of a product or a customer, it becomes a product profitability or a customer profitability. That's all. Follow? So you prepare income statement product-wise or customer-wise. Clear? So it's very similar to segment reporting. Why do you do this? See, 80% of the income may come from 20% of the customers. It's a Pareto rule, <clears throat> right? So, so or 80% of the income may come from 20% of the product. So, if I have 10 products, it's two of them or three of them which really give me maximum revenue. So, our focus should be on those three products. Our focus should be on those customers. Those 20% of the customers who are providing 80% of the revenue. So when we make a customer profitability statement or we make a product profitability statement, we know which product or which customer is actually contributing maximum to the operating incomes of that particular organization <coughs> or division. Therefore, based on this, we can then develop strategies so that we are able to retain these customers we can give them, we can have um, targeted advertising for these people. Yes or no? To, 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 we will try to attract similar customers. We will retain such profitable customers and we may even ex, uh, discourage the not so profitable customers. Yes or no? The analysis may also be used for targeted marketing. We can understand the 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 the, the the psyche or what kind of customers for a uh, fall uh, for are uh, bringing in the revenue and do a targeting marketing for those kind of customers in these cases activity based costing is extremely useful mm -hmm. what happens is lot of common costs get allocated based on the cost driver so common costs allocation of common costs is critical and it can be done based on cost driver based on cost drivers do you remember if this is done based on cost driver then it is more or less will be more equitable logical we can arrive at proper conclusions <clears throat> so we can decide which products to continue which customers to target to pamper yes or no Marketing costs may be increased with respect to certain products or the certain customers. Offers may be made for them. Special offers may be given to these special customers. We may take cost-cutting measures to be taken to improve profitability of any particular product or customer. Common costs, of course, would be incurred. Don't forget that. <laughs> but, but those costs which would anyway be incurred, even if the customer is dropped, of course, should not be considered when we are looking at product or customer. The cost, common cost, so some costs, there is a cost driver, reason for it. But some of the costs are such that even if a particular, say, customer is removed, we would still have that particular common cost. It's only an allocation. Such costs, of course, need not be considered. Let us look at an example, students. Look at this chart. Let's say you have four customers. The units sold have been given 10, 20, 30 and 40,000. So obviously A has the least customer. Sales is being made. But the sales value is 125, 180, 240 and 280,000. The cost of goods sold again is given. You have delivery costs and you have order taking costs. Okay. Delivery costs, delivery to that particular customer. So they are customer specific. Order taking the costs of taking the orders from the particular customers, again, that is customer specific. 
Then you have administration and depreciation costs. Don't you think these two costs must be an allocated common cost? And how have they allocated it? Allocated it equally. It looks as if they were allocated it equally to the four customers. There was some administration and some depreciation costs. Now, what is what is it that they have asked? Considering profit per unit sold, which customer is most profitable and which one is the least? Okay. So, we break it up. When we break it up, <coughs> what do we see? Sales, cost of goods sold, we take the delivery cost, order taken, and we come to the customer level operating profit, which is 45, 55, 80, and 85. Then we look at this allocation, of course, was there. We don't really need this. We are taking this 45,000 dividing by 10,000, 55 by 20, 80 by 30, 85 by 40. And we realize that as far as profit per unit is concerned, 4.5A is the best, most attractive. Maybe we could try and sell more to A or customers like A. At these prices, then we could maximize our profits. Followed, most profitable customer B is the least profitable. And just a very simplistic kind of analysis to show you that how we can make an analysis customer. You must understand here that the sales values are very, very, the, the, the levels in sales is much different, very, very active, huge. Because total profits here continue to be higher for customers. Well, it's total, but the per unit profit is really, really low. Maybe if we could increase the number of units here in this division. So, so see, it, it, it helps us to take certain decisions. <coughs> so, right? Final quiz students. Ready? A quiz covering everything that we have done so far. Testing your understanding of ROI, of RI, of uh, balance scorecard, of customer and product profitability. That's all small topics, not tough. Get ready, set, go. In evaluating an investment center, top management should concentrate on A. Dollar sales, B. Net income. C. Profit percentages and D. Return on investment. That's right. D. Return on investment. Which one of the following items would most likely not be incorporated into the calculation of a division's investment base when using the residual income approach for performance measurement and evaluation? Not incorporated. A. Fixed assets employed in division operation. Land being held by the division as a site for new plant. C. Division inventories when division management exercises control over the inventory levels. Division accounts payable when division management exercises control over the amount of short term credit. <coughs> B. That's right, students. Land which is being held for a new plan. This is for future. This is for future. It does not help us in generating the current income that you are talking about. Right, so this land which is being held, not being utilized, not being held for some future use, will not be considered. Which one of the following statements is true? The fundamental idea of a balance scorecard is to create corporate strategy. B. The balance scorecard cannot be used along with budgetary control systems. C. The purpose of a Budget scorecard is to increase the number of performance indicators in an organization. And D, a balance scorecard can be used to produce strategy maps. Which one of the following statements is true? Is the idea to create a corporate strategy? No, students, that's not the idea. You have a corporate strategy, you make a balance code based on that. Balance code card cannot be used with budgetary, of course not. It can be used with budgetary control systems. Is the purpose to increase the number of performance indicators? No, we need only key indicators. We need only key indicators. So this is also false. So is this true? A balance code card can be used to produce strategy maps. Yes, it can be used. 
cost as we saw, right? To increase its return on investment, ROI, a company has set up an incentive program that rewards each division for increasing its ROI. <laughs> One possible downfall of this incentive program is that it will A. Cause division managers to compete for the corporation's investment policy. B. Cause the corporation to select high-risk investments. C. Cause the corporation to pay out incentives if goals are achieved. And D. Result in managers rejecting profitable projects. Which one stood? This is the problem. It could result in managers rejecting profitable projects. Why? Because the ROI is lower than the existing ROI, but it is still profitable. They still reject it. Yes or no? If return on investment is a measure used on the balance scorecard, under which perspective would it be listed? If ROI is a measure, A. Financial perspective, B. Customer perspective, C. Learning and growth perspective, and D. Internal business perspective. That's right, financial perspective. Next, innovation process, operation process and post-sale services are all sub-processes of a perspective named internal business process perspective, external business process perspective, leadership perspective, re-engineering perspective. Come on, we don't even know these perspectives. There's no such thing, right? Internal business process perspective. Next. Which of the following statements is not true regarding lagging indicators? A. Lagging indicators are measures that relate to revenues. B. Lagging indicators indicate the results of past programs. C. Lagging indicators are performance drivers. D. Lagging indicators include measures such as customer profitability. Think and tell me students. Lagging indicators are measures which lead to revenues, past programs, customer profitability. They are not performance indicators, right? Lagging indicators are performance drivers. No, they are outcome measures. This is what leading indicators were. <coughs> what is the ROI of the Eastern Division of Randall Corp? as can be gathered from the following data relating to an 8-month period. Operating income is 1.6 million, assets are 15 million, working capital 1 million. So is the ROI 10%, 15%, 16% and 10.67%? Come on quick, quickly students. It is not 10%. Be careful. This is relates to an 8-month period. Annualized operating income, 1.6 million for 8 months. Therefore, this is 2.4 million. Yes or no? 2.4 million divided by 15 plus 1, 16 million. You get 15%. Correct answer, 15%. Don't forget this. When it is for 8-month period, you please take the annualized operating income. Clear? Which of the following is an example of internal business process perspective in balance scorecard? A. Employee turnover rates. B. Operating capabilities and number of patents. C. Operating income and revenue growth. D. Customer satisfaction and market share. B, yes students, <clears throat> this is customer, this is financial perspective, this is learning growth perspective, so operating capabilities and number of patents is the internal business process, process perspective, that's right. Which one of the following is a lag performance indicator? A, output per employee, B, number of training hours, return on capital employed, number of complaints from customers. Lag performance is a return on capital employed. Which of the following is an example of learning and growth perspective measure in a balanced scorecard? 
A. Employee turnover rates B. Operating capabilities and number of patents C. Operating income and revenue growth D. Customer satisfaction and market share Learning growth, employee turnover rates Right? An organization earning a profit can increase its return on investment by think and do. Increasing sales revenue and operating expenses by the same dollar amount. Decreasing sales revenue and operating expenses by the same amount, by the same percentage. Increasing investment and operating expenses by the same dollar amount. Increasing sales revenue and operating expenses by the same percentage. You've done this before, right students? You take measures and see. When you increase this by the same amount, the revenue and operating expenses by exactly the same amount, there is no change in the revenue. It remains the same. Yes or no? If you decrease sales revenue and operating expenses by the same percentage, this is something you should check and see, but I think the, the, the ROI will fall. Increase investment and operating expense. This what will happen? ROI will go up. Increasing sales revenue and operating by the same percentage, this will actually um, increase our income because sales will increase much more operating expenses Percentage is the same, but the amount will be less. So, we will have additional income will go up, no change in the denominator and therefore, this will increase the amount. So, no? But here, just the opposite app happens. Same percentage when it's come down, sales come down by a bigger amount than operating expenses. So, when the sales come down, your operating income will fall. So, here ROI will Sorry, sorry, this increasing investment and operating expenses by the same. If you do, ROI will fall, students. I'm sorry. Your ROI will fall. This will not increase, ROI will fall. Right? <coughs> a company is considering the addition of a new product line. The new product line is expected to, re to generate a return higher than the cost of capital but lower than the current overall return on investment. If the company decides to add the potential new product line, residual income will A. Increase, remain unchanged, C. Decrease and B. Become higher than the firm's return on investment. This is ROI. Return on investment. Okay. Come on, students. Think and tell. Quick. The residual income will increase, right students? It will not decrease because after all it is greater than the return, higher than the cost of capital. So it will go up, it will not remain unchanged. Will it become higher than the firm's return on investment? Residual income is in amount, return on income is on percentage basis. Okay? The imputed interest rate used in the residual income approach for performance measurement and evaluation can best be characterized as A. Historical weighted average cost of capital for the company B. Marginal after-tax cost of new equity capital C. Average return on investment that has been earned by the company in a particular period and D. Target return on investment set by management The target return which is set by the management. Customer profitability analysis uses which of the following in determining how serving particular customers causes activities to be performed and costs to be incurred. 
ए एक्टिविटी बेस्ड कास्टिंग बी ट्रेडिशनल सेगमेंट रिपोर्टिंग सी स्टैंडर्ड कास्टिंग एंड डी नॉर्मल कास्टिंग Activity based casting. That's right. <clears throat> to ensure that a divisional manager places appropriate focus on both the short term and the long term objectives of the division, the best approach would be to evaluate the manager's performance by using a return on investment (ROI), which permits easy and quick comparisons to other divisions; b residual income, since it will eliminate the rejection of capital investments. That have a return less than ROI but greater than the cost of capital. C. Division segment margin or profit margin. D. Financial and non-financial measures, including the evaluation of quality, customer satisfaction, and mass market performance. ROI is short term. Residual income also short term, <clears throat> though this advantage is right. This is profit margin, short term. But if you consider both financial and non-financial measures, then you are covering both short term and long term objectives. A company has two divisions: computer trading and printer trading. The manager of the computer division is evaluated on the basis of ROI, while the manager of the printer division is evaluated on the basis of residual income. The cost of capital has been eleven percent, and the ROI has been. 15% for the two divisions each manager is currently considering a project with 13% rate of return according to current evaluation system for managers which managers would have incentive to undertake the project a both managers would have incentive to undertake the project b neither manager would have incentive to undertake the project c the manager of the computer division would have incentive to undertake the project while the manager of the printer division would not have incentive to undertake the project The manager of the printer division would have incentive to undertake the project, while the manager of the computer division would not have incentive to undertake the project. <laughs> Think and tell me, students. Computer division is evaluated on the basis of ROI, right? So what will happen? The cost of capital is eleven percent. ROI has been fifteen percent for the two division. Each manager is considering with thirteen percent. When it's thirteen percent, ROI will come down. So the manager of the computer division, if he's evaluated on ROI, he will not be interested. The manager, or this computer division, let me say, will not be interested. Not interested. Okay, and not interested. What about the the other manager? Who is the other manager? Manager printer division is on the basis of residual income. Residual income is there because the cost of capital is eleven percent, and their new this project is thirteen percent. So residual income, this he will be interested. So this person, that is the printer division, will be interested. Which one is that option? Printer division will have incentive to undertake the project. Manager of the computer division will not have. That is option D. Yes or no? For several years, Western Division of the Dravid Company has maintained a positive residual income. Western is currently considering investing in a new project that will lower the division's overall return on investment, but increase its residual income. What is the relationship between the expected rate of return on the new project, the firm's cost of capital, and the division's current ROI? I don't think you need to look at the option studies. If you can. Think what should be the relation. What is greater than what? What is lower than what? I'll read out the options anyway. A. The expected rate of return on the new project is higher than the division's current return on investment, but lower than the firm's cost of capital. The firm's cost of capital is higher than the expected rate of return on the new project, but lower than the division's current return on investment. The division's current return on investment is higher than the expected rate of return on the New project, but lower than the firm's cost of capital. The expected rate of return on the new project is higher than the firm's cost of capital, but lower than the division's current return on investment. Which one? What do you think? See what is happening. Western is considering investing in a new project. This will uh, this will bring down the return on investment. So obviously, the return on investment on the new project is lower than the current investment. Correct? But it will increase the residual income. So this return must be higher than the 
cost of capital right so can i say i think the d option says that the expected rate of return is higher than the firm's cost of capital but it is lower than the division's current return on investment so d is the correct option followed a company uses return on investment to evaluate year end divisional performance which one of the following inventory practices would most reduce comparability among two similar divisions a one division uses a perpetual inventory system and the other uses a periodic inventory system b one division uses the net method to record purchases and the other division uses the gross method to record purchases c one division uses b4 and the other division uses b4 d one division places goods for sale on consignment and the other division does not which one of the following inventory practices would most reduce comparability among the two similar divisions when one uses b4 and the other uses b4 then it will not be comparable a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system will not affect the valuation you should arrive at the same valuation of the contract purchases will not affect the inventory one division places which we say that also will not affect the valuation only this affects the valuation of closing stock therefore it will uh, therefore it will affect the uh, income <coughs> Which one of the following statements about a balance scorecard is incorrect? It seeks to a it seeks to address the problems associated with traditional financial measures used to assess performance. B the notion of value chain analysis plays a major role in the drawing up of a balance scorecard. C it relies on the perception of the users with regard to service provided. D it is directly derived from scientific management theories. D is incorrect students that is correct but go through these sentences see that you understand what it does it seeks to address the problems which are associated with traditional financial measures used to assess performance right only financial measures do not have this statement is true value chain analysis plays a major role in drawing up something value is added at every stage you train the employees it results in a value you improve uh, you improve internal process it results in a value that is more customers that results in profitability definitely this is true it relies on the perception of the users with regard to service provided yes we look at it from the point of view of the customers we look at it from the point of view of the employees definitely it relies on the perception of users and the which one of the following combinations of actions regarding a segment's revenues costs and investment would a segment's roi always increase revenues cost investment increase revenue increase cost decrease investment increase b revenue decrease cost decrease investment decrease revenue increase cost increase investment increase d revenue increase cost decrease investment decrease which of the following combinations would a segment's roi always increase you want the return to increase if you want the return to increase your revenues your profits have to go up and your investments have to come down yes or no right so revenues this option will not be there all three if the costs increase then this option will not be there right this option will not be there they left with these two options revenues increase costs decrease correct if investments increase the roi will come down but if the investments decrease decrease then roi will increase yes or no the various stakeholders include vendors employees distributors customers stockholders and society according to norton and kaplan which of these should be represented on the balance book A all stakeholders are important and should be included B all except society which is too general to be included C only employees customers and stockholders D only those that are vital for achieving the company's strategy 
those the, these correct students those which are absolutely vital for achieving the company strategy they should be 